it's going to fall to a point known as undershoot. Okay, the action potential will undershoot. This is the third sort of step. Undershoot is going to be a situation in which the voltage-gated sodium channels, all of those are going to be closed. Nothing will be entering, no positive will be entering, and some, a few of the voltage-gated positive uh, potassium channels are going to be open. They're going to be open, and they're going to be allowing some po potassium to leave, just like they were doing during the duration of the falling phase. But what's going to be happening during this undershoot as a culmination of this closed and open state of these two separate voltage-gated channels and two separate ions is now something different, a new term for you, called hypopolarization. What do you think that means? Hypo means very low or below polarization right now occurs. And this is called the undershoot. So now you should be thinking here what this means. This simply means that the membrane potential becomes in this weird sort of state where it is now, for the first time, more negative than the resting potential. It becomes more negative than RP. So look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to undershoot this negative 70, and I'm going to continue falling, continue falling, and look what I'm doing. I'm going below negative 70, almost to the very bottom here. That's called the undershoot, what I just did. I didn't stop at negative 70, at resting potential. I went all the way down because some of these channels were still open, these were all still closed, and thus I'm going to become more negative, like negative 80 maybe, than the uh, resting potential was. This is RP. And eventually what's going to happen is, this can't be maintained forever, but eventually this, uh, these voltage-gated potassium channels that were pretty much open and causing this, eventually these will close up as well, and then the membrane is going to return to the resting potential. Membrane returns to RP, but they only returns to RP, which is equal to negative 70 millivolts after the undershoot has happened. So I did the undershoot. Let me just continue this now. Now I'm just going to go back to this, back to my regular old negative 70 RP. This was an action potential that I just did here. I rose, I fell, I undershot, and now we start this whole process over. The whole idea behind these three phases of action potential that you should keep in mind is the following. All of this is entitled and referred to as an all or none event. In other words, what's going to happen is whenever an action potential occurs, whenever it happens, in other words, it always is going to occur in the same process and have the same outcome. It's always the same process of rising and falling and undershooting and the same outcome of those processes. Same process and same outcome. All or none. Uh, one of my high school teachers referred to an action potential as like, let's say, a toilet flush. You cannot half flush a toilet and you cannot, you know, three, four, three quarters flush a toilet. Once you flush a toilet, you've done it and you have to wait a little bit for the next flush, right? There's a refractory period that has to happen right over here. That's basically how he understood, and I've always understood an action potential based off of this phenomenon known as an all or none event. Now, what we sort of want to mention about this all or none event, uh, sort of a caveat of this, is that sometimes intensity varies. This doesn't mean that um, you're going to have a stronger action potential. It just means that the intensity of the sensation of an action potential might be different due to other reasons, okay? Not because of a stronger action potential. Action potentials always follow this general pathway that I drew here. They always follow the same process and outcome. But the intensity of the sensation that you might feel, maybe it's a sharp prick on the foot or on the pinky toe, or maybe it's a light touch on the top of the hand. That intensity of sensation varies, and that's dependent not on the amount of action potential, let's say, but it's dependent on things like the number of neurons that are stimulated. The number of neurons that are stimulated when you poke your foot on something, when you step on a nail, are a lot more and in a lot greater severity than, let's say, when you just brush your hand on top of your other hand. And also, the frequency of stimulation, aka the graded potential, 
how much of the action potential is happening. Lots of action potentials are happening when something sharp pokes your foot. Not that many are happening when you're just rubbing your hand. And this is the reason why we as humans have this ability to differentiate different feelings. Okay? We can differentiate something as significant and as painful and as hard as a nail being stuck on your foot compared to, let's say, a light touch on the hand. So we can differentiate different levels of intensity. Okay, that's what we're talking about when we say that there's different intensities. Not that an action potential was so strong that it went to positive 99 millivolts. No, that's not what happened. It went to positive 35, but maybe it did that a lot, and a lot of neurons did that, or maybe it did that over a long period of time, frequency there. That covers our look at action potentials. We're going to conclude this lecture by looking at some accessories to action potentials and neurons in the idea of action potential conduction.